Hello everyone, Prof Sales here again with another video in the Resellers Evolution series. And today we want to talk about inventory systems. Um, this subject probably is one of the toughest subjects for people to wrap their head around, especially when you're first starting out in reselling. I know that it's been an evolution for me, truly, my inventory system. And hopefully some of the things I've learned today will help you make a good decision about how to set up your system to keep track of all your items. So let's move right into it. So this is the inventory tab in my Excel workbook of all my business results and metrics and so on. And I'm going to take a moment or two to explain everything that's on here and maybe um, why it's on here as well. So hopefully it will make sense. Up here in this tab, or in this section of the, the book, you see a um, cell current inventory median age. All this is, is it's a median uh, formula. You can see it set up right here of all the items down through here that I still own. So in other words, half the items that I own are less than 98 and a half days old and half that I own are more than 98 and a half days. So this kind of gives me an idea of how my inventory is aging. This cell figures out um, how long the median time is between when I sell something. Um, so you can see it's 18 days and it's based off this K column right here which just puts just has a, a total that shows you how long I had the item before it sold. So on average um, half my items sell less than 18 days and half of them sell in more than 18 days. So it just gives me an idea about how long I have to keep something, how long I am keeping something before it sells. In these cells, we also see how many items I have listed, um, how many I've sold in this particular time frame, and how many items I had total. Um, so in other words, I had 1,039, I still have 399 listed, just with this particular spreadsheet and sold 640 for a 61% sell through. Um, just kind of a good number to know. Uh, don't know if it's really super meaningful, but once you set these things up, you don't really have to do anything and the spreadsheet just keeps calculating it so you can always look at it and decide if it's useful for you or not. So now the meat and bones. So what I've done here is I've set up columns for each item that I sell. And while it probably looks a little confusing with everything that's on here, it's really not that complicated. This has evolved over time, and your inventory system will evolve as well as you decide what's important and what's not. Over here I have in this column just a simple item number, and this is just sequential numbers. It just goes right in order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, here's an item description, which has a quick uh, description of what the item is. You can see if it has a hyperlink like this, it means I actually copied it um, from eBay for the most part and pasted the hyperlink right here. That's kind of a nice feature because it gives you the ability if someone has a question about that item, you can go right to that item's listing and see what they're talking about. It's just one more way to be able to reference your items. Over here we see an item column with an item number. Um, this is eBay's item number or Amazon's item number uh, after the item. Um, if, if I haven't put it in, usually I don't always put that in for Amazon, but it's usually the eBay item number. When I first generate the listing, I put this in. Over here, we see a category. Um, I came up with four character categories for all my items. For instance, MBUS means men button up shirts. Um, you'll see uh, men's athletic wear, MATW. VDGM video game and so on and so forth. You can come up with a system whatever you want. You don't have to do that but sometimes I like to break things out by category. It's a quick way to, to search um, for an item. Over here is the platform I'm selling it on. Uh, most of these are eBay through here but I put an A for Amazon, C for Craigslist, F for Facebook, so on and so forth. Just a way to remember where it is you're selling it. The original list date. Um, you can see that um, I have a lot of dates in here. This is when I originally listed the item. So if you list it on the 1st of May and sell it on September 5th, you're going to know exactly how long you had it because you have this date in here. 
usually I'll list a bunch of things the same day, so this is not a big deal to add a bunch of items. I'll just put, you know, January 10th, make a list of, you know, 10 items, and then go list 10 items on January 10th. So pretty easy. Sold. Ah, the one we all want to see, right? Did it sell? Um, if it's a yes here, then it sold. If not, then we can see right here in this item, it did not sell yet. And you can see this particular item, this little puzzle is 256 days old, which is telling me I need to do something about that puzzle. Um, and then last but not least, and let me scroll down so you can see a few more of these, is the location. This is critical. This ties into my inventory bin system, which I will show you in part two of this video, how I set this up. I got this idea from looking at warehouse ideas on the internet and how they set up bin systems. And it's a system that you can use that you can grow with, whether you stay, you know, a closet in your house or you're using a bedroom or garage or you eventually end up in a warehouse. You can use this system. It will grow with you. I really, really like it. I'm so glad I went to it early on and didn't have to go back and try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and come up with a different system. Finally, over here we see a time number. This is how long it took for the item to sell. Now you might be saying, well, how did I know that? Well, if you see right here where it says 221 days for this genuine Hoover vacuum bag, if it sold today, I would just copy in that number right here and then just delete the age and the location because it's no longer there. But I would just copy in, well, it took 221 days. Or if I didn't get to it till tomorrow, let's say to send it out, um, this would actually be one day extra from what it really was. It would say 222 when really it sold in 221. But all this is is just where I entered in how long it took the item to sell. Again, I can use that to figure out how long it's taking me to sell my items on average, or I can even filter it by a category and say, all right, well, how long is it taking women's jeans to sell? And I can go in and I can write a formula to tell me to do that. So I'll know how long I'm going to hold jeans on average. Again, all this gives you ways that you can better understand your inventory. You want two things from a good inventory system. You want it to be able to keep track of your items so that when they sell, you can find them, pack them up, ship them if need be, if, they're, if you're not using a, a system like Amazon FBA, and to analyze your business so that you'll know what you still have, how much room you have, how long things are setting, how long it's taking for them to sell, how often you're selling in a certain category versus overall or versus other categories. All these things an inventory system can show you how to do. And I think, you know, it's worth your time coming up with a system to figure that out. A couple more things on the inventory sheet. Uh, you will see here that a lot of these are highlighted in green. They have a green fill, which is this little selection right up here. I do that so I can very quickly see if an item has sold or not. It's easier to look down through this list. If, if all the listings looked exactly the same and had no breakup of color, uh, it, it can play some tricks on your eyes and it's a little tougher to see sometimes. I can also filter out, um, you know, without, without the color, for instance. Like I can just see all the, if I put no color, it shows me all the items that have not sold. These are all items I currently have in my inventory. So you say, well, why would you want to do that? There's been a few instances where I've sold an item and I couldn't find it. <laughs> so, and that's going to happen to you as you get dozens and hundreds and maybe even thousands of items. You're going to run into instances where you cannot find an item. It's a little bit embarrassing to tell a buyer that, hey, um, I really want to ship you your item, but I lost it and I can't. So having different ways to find items, whether through your inventory system is always a good best practice. Um, it will save you so many times. I have misplaced items, but I have found all of them. I've never sold something where I couldn't find it. Um, so I've been pretty happy with how this has come about. And it may seem a little redundant to have, you know, different colors and by item number and by category and commerce and the e-commerce platform and the original list date and location yada 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 but you definitely want to have 
backups for how you can find items. It is critically important as you grow that you be able to find the items that you've sold. Um, nothing will make your customers more upset if you're continually telling them, hey, I sold this to you, but I can't find it. It's going to hurt your feedback. You're going to have to give refunds. It can affect your defect rate. All kinds of negative things come about. So take the time to figure out what's a good inventory system for you. Um, this one may not be the perfect one for you, but it works for me, and hopefully you can get some good ideas from it. Last but not least, I'm going to show you how an entry would go. Um, let's say I was selling, and I normally would be copying this from eBay site, for instance, if I'm selling on there. But let's say it's Levi's, jeans, um, boot cut, size 32, 32 men's. And that would be the exact description that I would have on the listing in eBay. So again, that way you're not looking for a different description than what you put on your e-commerce platform. One of the mistakes I made when starting out was I would just come up with whatever description I wanted to and put it here in this column. And I quickly learned that made absolutely no sense. Whatever description you give for your item on whatever platform you're selling it, make that the same thing you put here. Again, it gives you another way to find your item. Um, another way to figure it out in case you misplace something. And it just it just makes logical sense. Over here would be the item number. This would also be copied in from eBay, for instance. We'll just put one in. I would put in my, my category. This would be men's jeans. Uh, e and whatever today's date is and you can see it automatically drops down and starts counting the date and then last but not least I have a locations tab which I'm going to show you right here which shows me all my bins and where I have spots open so let's say for instance I've got to I'm going to list six genes well I noticed that A312 has six spots so I'd probably go ahead and make up six um, inventory tags for A312. And what I would do is I would put, all right, item number 1028 is in A31, A312. And then I would copy that down to these five to show that I'm going to put all those there. Now if we go back over locations open, we notice A312 now says zero. It's no longer has any openings because we've used up all the openings. Again, this goes back to efficiencies. Why do I have this little tab here? Um, because my inventory room is in a bedroom upstairs in my house and my office is actually downstairs. The reason I did that, I didn't want to have my office in there with my inventory, just, it just started getting too crowded. It's much simpler to have a quick hitter like this that shows you what spaces you have open than to walk up there and look for spaces. Um, again, it's an efficiency um, factor. And I want to be able to know if I list four or five pairs of jeans or I list eight of this or three of that, I want to be able to know exactly where they will go instead of having to walk up there and you know, eyeball it and see if there's room. I'm going to know when I walk up there, there's six spots for these jeans. So that's all I would do for an entry. And then I would move on to the next entry as I, you know, listed on eBay and all the info is generated, the item number, the description would be there. And I would put in the category, the platform, the date, this automatically figures and this is already here. So that's really all it is. It's very, very simple. And as I said, um, you definitely want to come up with a system that works for you. It doesn't have to be this one. I'm probably a little overkill with <laughs> wanting to know all the stats about my items and my inventory and my business, but it's always easier, I think, to actually come up with more things and then pare them down than to start with only the bare basics of what you need. Um, I just think it's easier to you don't, you don't really know when you're starting out what you're going to need. You don't know what's going to be important necessarily. So it's not always a horrible idea to do a little extra, maybe come up with a few extra things. And then if you find you don't need them or they're not very useful, you can always delete them and get rid of them. But 
whatever you come up with, try to do it from day one and try to stick to it. So um, that's the inventory system um, that I've come up with and I hope that that was helpful for you to, to see. Okay, everyone, that's going to do it for this edition of Prof Sales, a reseller's evolution. I hope this video was useful to you. Stay tuned for part two on inventory to see the actual system in action. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing with the button down below. And I, as always, I always appreciate your comments. Be sure to leave those down below as well. And until next time, good sales.